Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I'm so grateful to be here in your house and our house together as one family. We're going to celebrate God today. We're going to just lift him up. And I just invite you to stand with me. And I just think intentionally we're going to just open our hearts and our minds this morning. We're going to allow God in to work in us, through us, into one another. God, he never leaves, right? He never leaves. He's always here. But he loves when we acknowledge him. He loves when we invite him. He loves that we're paying attention just as much as he is. And sometimes... It's easy for us to turn our backs on God. And it's not vindictive. Sometimes we just forget that he's here and he's always here. So we're going to take a moment to just thank him. 
And however you do that, if you're going to loud and like loud cries of thank you, praise you, Jesus, or you just get quiet in yourself internally and you just praise him for what he's done in your life, I just invite you to lift up your hearts, lift up your, your spirit, offer yourself, allow him to do something beautiful in you today. Pray with me, Father, you are such a good, good dad. (laughs) It is such an honor to be called a child of yours, Father. It is such an honor that you would even pay attention to the details of our lives, God. It is such a gift that you are willing to spend time with us. So today, God, we're taking all of the worries of life, everything that happened yesterday, even if we woke up on the wrong side of the bed today and we just have this feeling, we're going to lay it down, God. We're laying everything down right here, right now, all the good, all the bad, the stuff we don't understand. We are your kids here, fully surrendered to to you because God you have a a beautiful wonderful perfect plan we're laying down the reins of control in our lives and we're asking you to take over father you are invited into our hearts and minds today do god what only you can do Mm, thank you jesus here i am and all my intentions Mm. and all my obsessions i want to lay them all down in your hands only your love is vital though i'm not entitled still you call me your child and god you don't need me but somehow you want me you know how you love me and somehow that frees me to take my hands off of my life and the way it should go God God, you don't need me but somehow you want me and know how you love me and somehow that frees me to open my hands up and I give you control I give you control I give you control It's all yours, Lord. I've had plans. I've had plans. Shattered and broken. Things I once hoped in fall through my hands. You have plans to redeem and restore me. You're behind and before me, oh help me believe, and God you don't need me, but somehow you want me, and oh how you love me, somehow that frees me to take my hands off of my life, and the way it should go, and God you don't need me, Somehow you want me, and oh how you love me, and somehow that frees me to open my hands up, and I give you control, I give you control, yes you want me, somehow you want me, I give you control. It's great. 
step on me and you want me now want you lord somehow you want me the king of heaven wants me so this world has lost its grip on me you want me yes somehow you want me king of heaven wants me this world has lost its grip on me. God, God, you don't need me. Somehow you want me and know how you love me. Somehow that frees me to take my hands off of my life and the way it should go. And God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me and somehow that frees me to open my hands up to you and I give you control God you don't need me God you don't need me but somehow you want me oh how you love me and somehow that frees me to take my hands off of my life and the way it should go Somehow that frees me to open my hands up And I give you control 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 my life, Lord, it is in your hands. Oh, my life, oh, my life, oh, my life is in you, oh, Jesus. I give you control. I give you control. You have the control. When my heart is heavy for all my days, oh yes, I will. Mm, the name of Jesus. Bless mm. you, Father. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now. I'm in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh, so yes, I will lift you high. In the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. 
praise. Oh, yes, I will. And I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Then nothing can stand against. And I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Then nothing can stand against. And I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand against. And I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. That nothing can stand against. So yes. I will lift you high in my lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name, Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. It's all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I will praise. I'm just going to praise you, Lord. I'm just going to praise you, Lord. I will praise. I'm just going to praise you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. I'm being reminded of a story of a man who lost his wife and he told me that God called him while he was driving and sobbing to get out of the car and dance. And I remember that only because in the midst of some of the really heavy parts of our lives, we forget that the best is still yet to come. And so God reminds us that we can still have joy even when it hurts, even when it's hard. That we get to shout joys to our Father who laid down his life for us. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. My Jesus. Savior, Lord, there is none like you, and all of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower refuge and strength let every breath all that I am never cease to worship you shout to the Lord all the earth let us see power and majesty praise to the king mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name I sing for joy at the words of your name forever I love you forever I stay nothing compares Savior, Lord, there is none like you, 
all of my days i want to praise the wonders of your mighty love my comfort my shelter tower of refuge and strength let every breath all that i am never cease to worship you satisfied me I've tasted and seen that nothing is like you nothing is like you so we will shout to the Lord all the earth let us Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. And I'll sing for joy at the work of your hand. Forever I love you, forever I'll stay. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Nothing compares. Nothing compares.
cleanse me from within and make me holy purify my heart cleanse me from my sin deep within refine as fire your my heart's one Control. Yes, God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me, and oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to take my hands off of my life and the way it should go. So God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me, and somehow that frees me to open my hands up and give you control. I give you control. I give you control. I give you control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So you know, church, if you're a little bit like me, and I think we found out we're a lot like each other. God has done a whole lot better with my life than what I've been able to do myself. Left to myself, I mess up every time. My best plans. I want you to know that God knows what to do with every single part of your life. As we were um, worshiping, and and Stephen, you you can keep playing a little bit. Um, I'm gonna call up Loretta and Patsy, Sarah, Pastor Adela, Pastor Henry.
need someone to intercede for you. That song was about, Lord, I give you control. You know, if, if you need interceding, if you need prayer, come on up. We want to pray for you. We want to intercede with you. We want to intercede with you. Because you're not alone. You're not alone. Don, come on up, my brother.
Now it's on. Uh, I just felt an encouragement. I, uh, I've been going through a really, really hard time in my life for the last couple of months. And um, so one of the things I've been dealing with is extreme anxiety. And I don't know if any of you have ever had anxiety, but it makes you feel like you're having a heart attack. So I've had tests. Um, it makes you feel like you're choking. It makes you feel like, uh, I felt like last week, I felt like someone took poison and was pouring it into my brain and into my body. And I'm like, I don't get it. I, I know this isn't real. Um, David was at work. I was, and I was petrified. People say, call me, call me. Well, I couldn't. I couldn't. I was just sick and laid out and exhausted and I can't do my regular stuff. I'm behind on things. I mean, I'm just laying it out there for you. It's awful. Some people have experienced it for a few weeks. Um, there was a time in my life when I was young. Uh, I think I'd lost a baby. I don't remember to tell you the truth, but there were three months that I would stay up all night and speak in my heavenly language because that's all I could do. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't, it was horrible. So I haven't had it this bad in lots and lots of years. But I, I heard a message this week because I did say, okay, I need to turn on the word. <laughs> I need to get something in me. And um, because when you're like that, often you can't read. Uh, that's my experience anyway, you can't concentrate. I could read the same word 500 times and I can't tell you what it was. Anyhow, I was watching this message, and um, this brother was bringing out, I think it's in Exodus. I just looked it up, and I can't even tell you what it is, but I think it's in Exodus 20, and it's where the Benjamites, who are one of the 12 tribes of Israel, had done an atrocious, horrible, horrible thing. And the other Israelites found out about it. And they said, they went to the Lord and they said, what do we do? And the Lord said, go and fight them. They, they need to be, there needs to be war. And so they went, and the first time they went, I think there were 25,000 of the good guys killed. They went back, beaten up. They went to the Lord. They said, what do we do, Lord? Why did you allow that? So that's number one. The Lord said, go up against him. Fight them. This has to be punished. They did what the Lord said. 18,000 were killed. They went back. Can you imagine what that's like, having that many people killed at one time? Of, of the good guys, so to speak. They went to the Lord and they said, what do we do? You are not taking up for us. You are not doing what it looks like you should do. You are not doing what your word says you should do. And we're not your chosen people. God said, go up against him and I'm going to give them into your hand. Have you ever felt like, okay, Lord, I've asked you one time, two times, three times. That's kind of what I was feeling like with my anxiety plus the junk that goes with it. I felt like I was being punished again. That's how I used to always feel. I said, no, I'm not putting that in my mind. I'm through that. It's taken me like 40 years, but I think I'm learning. I'm not being punished. But God, what is going on? I don't get it. 18,000 people now were dead. The Lord told him to go up again. How many of you would have a problem trusting God the third time? How many of you are in your third time? Our brother Philip, he's fighting. He's fighting physically. It's affecting him financially. It's affecting him, I'm sure, spiritually. He's probably arguing, saying, God, I have trusted you two times what are you going to do about it and guess what happened the third time the 
Lord smote the Benjamites and they came out victorious. So we never know. We never know. We have to keep believing the word. This morning in prayer, it was the word. That's all I could think about was well, I, we had Loretta read the word, the word, the word, the word, because we can't do this ourselves. We are blessed people. We are highly favored people. We are loved people. We are privileged people. We are people with hope. Always hope. rob you today so if you came up for prayer or if you didn't if you need prayer after and say just someone please help me believe this today God's gonna bless it he's going to bless it thus say it the Lord it didn't happen the first time It may not have happened the second time, or the third, or the fourth, or the fifth. But with God, give Him a next time. Come on, give Him a next time. Give him a next time. He's faithful. The Lord is faithful. And you can trust him. You can trust him. Let's trust him today. Ooh. Trust him today. Trust him today. trust you today Lord let's trust him today trust him. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, let's do it better. Come on. Woo! Oh yeah! Hallelujah! Yes! Yes! Yeah! I had a brother tell me uh, <laughs> came up and said, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. And uh, he said, listen, he said, Pastor, this is what I want. To, I want you to pray for me. And he was giving me this picture, not literally, but a picture. He says, Pastor, I need to give the Lord the remote control of my life. You know, guys, we know what remote control controls the television, right? Whoop, 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 whoop. Some of y'all going to be doing that today, right? You got Dallas, you got 49ers, you got, you know, we got some, you know. Mm. And, and, and then it goes back to, we were singing that song, I give you control, I give you control, I give you control, I give you. Not, listen, not easy. You know, these guys don't want to give up the remote control. Uh, you know, but hey, that was a beautiful picture. And I think, you know, I think we've, I think many of us have made that choice today. Lord, come on. 
you do better with this than I do. And uh, what a wonderful sense of, of God's presence. And he's, he's Holy Spirit. His presence, that's how he manifests himself today as Holy Spirit. He's a person. You don't see him, but you feel him. You hear him. It's a different kind of sound. Oh, some of you men just opened up and worship and blessing God. Beautiful. So he, uh, I'm Henry and uh, lead pastor of Life Church. I see we got a lot of people, uh, uh, many first timers, visitors today. Uh, I am so glad you're here. Let's give our friends a welcoming hand today. If you haven't filled out a connection card, be sure and do that. Before you head out, we have a little gift for you. And, uh, you know, we sing because the Bible says it's okay. We clap because we do. There's a reason we do all the things we do and all the things that you've seen and witnessed today is because it's scripture that says it's, it's, it's right to do it. It's good to do it. We want to align ourselves with God's word. And another thing that is great to do, it's great to give. Let me hear you say, it's great to give. It's great to give. Hey, come on, man. Let your face know it's great to give. Come on. <laughs> Pat, uh, Sister Loretta, one of our church elders, is going to come and take up God's tithe and our offerings at this time. Good morning, church. Good morning. Well, I looked in the Word this morning. Um, I look at my Word every day, but this morning I was looking for a scripture on tithing. And the Lord said this. He said, no, you just go and you tell them to prepare and ask the Lord. Ask the Lord what he wants you to give. Because sometimes we have in our minds what we think, the 10%. The 10% belongs to God. The word of God tells us that. But the other part all belongs to him anyway, all of it. So you let him tell you what you need to do. And if you need an envelope, the, the ushers will come and give, give out an on, envelope for you. And um, online, there's the online giving and welcome people out there who aren't able to come to church like my husband was for the last six or seven maybe a whole year he wasn't able to come to church but he sure loved to watch it online and and be right there with everybody and he when I would get home he'd say okay now who was that person he they sat right over there and I didn't see them before I said okay that's probably because they were in the back now they're further up <laughs> so that was a good thing so um, come on up, guys, and then we'll pray over the offering. Huh? Oh, yes. Hi, Pastor Joseph. <laughs> okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you this day. This day is so holy and precious to us, Father, that we are able to come and take up an offering, come and worship you, Father. So we just give you glory and we bless every single person, even if they don't have anything to give in the, in the offering, Father, you know their hearts and you know what they need. So we just bless them in the name of Jesus, amen.
Okay, one more time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ewa. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Que cumpla cien. That's the way my mother sings happy birthday. She knows that song. Thank you. You may be seated. All right. Wow. Please, please, you can't, don't give me the gifts right now. We can wait. No, just play. <laughs> Yesterday we went out to dinner and the server she, um, she asked me, she's like, what would you like to drink? I said, I want a Sprite. A Sprite? You're getting a Sprite? You never order a Sprite. I'm 40 now. I can order a Sprite. And the server was shocked because he responded that way. I said, did you see his face? Like, so because I'm 40, I could drink soda. Anyway. Thank you. Um, thank you for all the birthday wishes and the birthday prayers and the birthday blessings. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really true when we moved out here, that word that was given to us that our lives will be completely changed. The only birthday I ever remember in my life was when I was 15 years old. I don't remember ever my parents having birthdays for me. Um, but since I moved to Visalia, like I, every year, I am reminded how much I'm loved and how much I'm appreciated and, and, and all the birthday love. So thank you so much. Yay. Yes. So this morning, um, I get to bring what God has put in my heart. And um, before I do, um, I want to thank all of you who gave last week that generous, generous, I mean generous blessing to Pastor Joseph and Adela. Proverbs 11.25, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And that's exactly what you did last week. You refreshed them. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. For your church I thank you for your children I thank you that this community of people are generous people father I thank you for this morning and everything that took place I thank you for every person that's here for the first time Holy Spirit have your way in and through me as I share God's word and what he has put in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so I want to show you a picture, which is going to be the first picture I sent you, Bill. And you, some of you have seen this picture. Some of you have not. And this lady here, her name is Sister Juanita. Hermana Juanita. Because of her obedience to God, I know Jesus. Because she planted the seed in my heart when she came to my door in 2008 and asked me if I knew Jesus. 
And if, did, it, did I know that he loved me and that he wanted to give me a good life and wanted to forgive me of my sins? I love this woman. She changed my life. When she came into my life, I was a mess. And I lived in these apartments for years, and I had never, ever seen this woman. She would pick me up every Sunday, take me to church. She bought me my first Bible. She was there for me. She counseled me. She took me under her wing. And I am forever grateful for her because all of us have a person like that in our lives they either told us or invited us or even every time you saw them oh my gosh here she comes <laughs> she's gonna talk about jesus <laughs> oh my gosh there's that brother there's that brother <laughs> but it's because of them it's because of her that I've become a follower of Christ. I believe he is who he says he is. I believe he is real. I believe what I read in his word. I share his love. I pray for others. I believe that he is coming back. Yes, he is. I believe that he is the son of God. I believe that he died for my sins. Yes. I believe that he rose again on the third day. I believe that when I die, I am going to heaven. And because I am a follower of Christ, in John 15, 20, 21, the Living Bible, Jesus said, do you remember what I told you? A slave isn't greater than his master. So since they persecuted me, naturally they will persecute you. The people of the world will persecute you because you belong to me. For they don't know who God who sent me. They don't know God. Now in Acts uh, 6, chapter 3, the Living Bible, it's where Pastor was talking about last week how the apostles asked the people, the community, pick seven men that are wise, full of the Holy Spirit, and light, and, well, and, and who are well thought of, by everyone. I'm sure they prayed. I'm sure they had some like, no, why are you going to choose him? We have this guy. I mean, I'm sure they had little, you know, because they were human. You know, like, I want him. No, but I want him. Or, you know, I'm sure that happened. But in the end, they came together in one mind and they chose seven, where in verse six, they were presented to the apostles. They, were, they prayed for them, they laid hands on them, and they blessed them. I saw that as like, go show me what you got. Get to, yes, get to work, go show me what you got. Go do what you were called to do. It reminds me of a story of my life. And some of you know this story. And because when I was reading this and, and I said, go show me what you got, go show me what you're going to do, it reminded me of this story, and it was Henry's daughter, Hannah. Hannah did not want me with her dad. She was 20, and I was 25. And she's the only girl. So here comes this 25-year-old, and I'm getting all of her dad's attention. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? It's true. To the point that if you stay with her daddy, I'm moving out. She moved out. 
Hannah would come and visit us, and we would be in the same room, never acknowledged me. Hey, Daddy. Whatever. Another time, hey, Daddy. Whatever. But it did hurt me. It did hurt me that I used to, and we were just like barely married, and I used to say, she comes to my house. Dang. <laughs> How disrespectful she is. She's rude. She has no manners. And Henry said, well, you should start, you should say hello to her. What? For reals. So I did. Took me a bit, but I did. Hey, Hannah. Some other time. Hey, Hannah. Hey, Hannah. And I went to my husband, and I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Don't stop. Eventually, she'll say hello. So I continued. I continued until one day she said, hey. I was like, hey. <laughs> I mean, she came to the house uninvited. She would just show up. There was times where Henry would be like, hey, I'm going out for breakfast with Hannah. Oh, can I come? No, she just wants to go with me. I would be so hurt. But I saw how Henry loved my kids. And I saw how Henry respected my kids that are not his. He loved them, cared for them, respected them, treated them as his own. So I started praying. I said, Lord, I want to love Hannah like that. I want to love Hannah the way Henry loves my kids, Father God. Lord, just help me. I want to love her. I don't want to have these ugly feelings towards her. I care about her. She's a good person. Help me, Lord. Well, one day my husband says, hey, Hannah, Hannah needs a place to stay. She's going to save some money to get her own place. She's going to move in the back house. I didn't think much of it. I was like, whatever, I don't care. And the Lord said to me, show me. Show me that you want to love her like you've been praying. Show me. Show me what you got. Let me tell you everything she did bothered me. Drove me nuts. Everything. If she had parties and didn't clean up that same night, it bothered me. If she touched my food, it bothered me. If she didn't clean the kitchen, it bothered me. If she, everything she did bothered me, and I knew there was tension, because you can feel it in the room. And one day, the Lord woke me up and said, I want you to go apologize to Hannah. I cried. Because I said, why me? She hurt me too. I don't just want you to go apologize, but I want you to give her something that's yours. I cried, and I fought, and then I took a deep breath, and I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I go, Hannah lives in the back house, so there was a door in the kitchen that, came, that she was able to come in. As I'm going to the kitchen, guess who's coming in through that door? I'm like, oh, Jesus. This is going to happen right now. <laughs> Divine appointment. Why? Because he wants to see, are you real? You're praying for this. And I did. I said, you know, Hannah, I'm sorry. She's like, for what? I said, well, I've hated you. I've been jealous of you. Everything that you've just been doing around the house, it bothers me, and I don't want to live like that. I'm sorry, and here's this gift. There, it was like a, like something broke. And you see us now? 
It's like she, yesterday she wrote on my, on my thing, she said, I love you so much. And I'm like, Hannah Perez, you love me so much? What? <laughs> you see, but there had to be that. There had to be that. And, you know, and God is going to do those things. Like here with these seven that were chosen, show me. Do your work. Do what I have called you to do. Matthew 28, 18, 20, New Living Bible. Jesus came and said to them, All power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go and make followers of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to do all the things I have told you. And I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So God never leaves us. When we are doing God's work, he never leaves us. He's always there with us. So they have chosen eight. And in Acts chapter 6, we're going to read about Stephen, one of the seven. In Acts chapter 6, 8 through 10, easy to read version, says Steve, Stephen received a great blessing. God gave him power to do great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. But some of the Jews there were from the synagogue of free man, as it was called. The group included Jews from Cyrene, Alexandria, Cilicia, and Asia. And they started arguing with Stephen, but the spirit was helping him speak with wisdom. His words were so strong that these Jews could not argue with him. Have you ever had a debate with a non-believer? Because that's what was happening with, with Stephen. He was having a debate with these people, but they couldn't get through him because he was so knowledgeable. He was so on fire. He had so much power. I heard someone say, whatever you feed grows. What you starve it has to die. It's not it's... Whatever you starve is not it's going to die. No, it has to die. It's going to die. So that's what we see. Stephen was so full of the word that that was the only thing that was just coming out of him. I've had a debate before with someone who knew who I used to be. All the bad things I did to my parents, my kids, my friends, my partners, and to myself. And I would say, look at me. You are going to tell me that God doesn't exist. That it's not true, that it's a myth, because science says. There's something different in me. Look at me. I am forever changed. I am no longer the person that I used to be. I have a good heart. I, I, I love people. I care for people. I mean, it just happened. God is working inside of me. He changed me. And no matter what you say is going to change what I believe. And who Jesus is in my life. I once was blind, but now I see. Jesus. And our conversation ended. 
because we are not to entertain the person that is trying to deceive you. We're not going to entertain that. I've heard of, man, my, my children, are, they've been watching the, the end of times. Man, it, that's terrible. We know it's coming. It's in the Bible. But when you're watching something, it's, that takes it your mind. It just cannot comprehend that. You know, so we are not to entertain. And, and that's what Stefan was doing here. I'm not entertaining you. I'm not going to agree with you. I know what I believe. Acts 6, 11 through 12, the Living Bible. So they brought in some men. To lie about him. Claiming that he had heard Stephen curse Moses and even God. Look, we are to live our lives in a way so amazing that people, they have nothing else to say. They're going to start lying about us. Because they can't accuse us of something. And usually it's behind our backs. So here they come. They lie about Stephen. Claiming that he had heard him curse Moses and even God. These accusations roused the crowds to anger and fury against Stephen. And the Jewish leaders arrested him and brought him before the council. Acts 6, 15 says, At this point, met everyone in the council chamber saw Stephen's face become as radiant as an angel. So it wasn't before. Stephen's face wasn't shiny before. No, Stephen's face got shiny when he was brought in the room where everyone was there. I believe that that was the time that God was like, yes, fuego. Mm, fuego. There's going to be fuego right now. Even though Stephen had power, because that's what we read, that God gave him power, this was the moment that God was just going to speak to him. And let me tell you, God spoke through him. Just like he would speak through you. You know, this morning we were in prayer, and someone talked about Habakkuk. He mentioned Habakkuk and how he was in the hill. And, and God told him, don't you see? Well, Habakkuk was not a prophet. Habakkuk was a herdsman. He took care of sheep, and God still chose to use him for his glory, just like he will use all of us. Because it's not about titles. It's about a willing heart and an obedient heart. So I looked up radiance. What does the Bible say about radiance? I thought I was going to see like an angel like, ding. But no, I didn't. It said, if you are filled with light, with no dark corners, then your whole life will be radiant. It is possible for us to be so filled with light that our lives are radiant. You probably have heard people say, man, brother or sister, you're just so happy. Or 
I know what you go through, but you have, you have peace. Like, or you've been working here for so long and you still have a smile on your face. How is that possible? Because you have the light of Jesus. It's true. It's true. And that's what they see. But maybe some of those people don't know Jesus, so they don't even know what the light is or what radiant looks like. They just see you, and they say, wow, she's always happy. When I used to work at the Lazy Dog, oh, Lord, I really love that job, in L.A., and, and they would say, Eva, you're working today? I said, yeah, girl, I come in at 5. She's like, oh, my gosh, I'm so happy because I like working with you because my day just goes so smooth. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like, I never thought people even, I mean, listen, people are not going to tell you, but I can assure you that if you are a person, that you go to your job, and you don't get into the bonchinche. <laughs> and, yes, the gossip, that's gossip. Bonchinche, it's gossip. And you go and you handle your business. And you help someone who needs help. Instead of saying, you figure it out. And you're there. And when you come, you just feel that joy flowing out of you. Let me tell you, they may not tell you, but they like when you're there. They like when you're there. But here we see the opposite with Stephen. Why? Because they were haters. And their ears were clogged up. And they were blind to the truth. So I want to show you a picture, a before and after picture. Um, Bill has that. Milk. It's coming, it's coming. <laughs> okay, so this picture here, th <laughs> this would have, this would, this was the best day of my life that every girl dreams and wish of their quinceanera. And look at my face. <laughs> all my pictures, all my pictures, there's no radiance in that. There's no joy. My dad was not even there. He chose to go to the movies. I was sad. I was in a month after this, after this girl, I had the limo, the DJ, the video, the dress, the chambelanes, the damas. I mean, my mom made my dress, which I still have. I mean, I party time. And I'm not happy. A month after this is when my life went for the worst. I ran away from home at this age. That's not radiance. But then, <laughs> why? Because Hermana Juanita has a big part of that in my life. You know, when my husband met me, I was still like that. That one time I was so like scared because I did not know what was happening because my whole face was in pain. My cheeks, my jaw, I was scared and I told him, listen, 
something's happening to my face. And he said, what? I said, I don't know. It just hurts really, really bad when I smile. <laughs> and, and he didn't get it right away. No, I'm not lying to you. I had to laugh like this. <laughs> yes, because it hurt really bad. And he said, you know what? He said, you are exercising your smiling muscles. But because I always had that face, my, of course my face was going to hurt. Now my husband says I sleep like this. <laughs> Give me Jesus. Radiance. No radiance. Jesus transforms our lives. And, and, and what's beautiful about this, like I said, it was when he was brought into the council where everyone was there watching him that his face got radiant because I believe what we're about gonna read that is when God was like wiggle so in Acts chapter 7 1 through three, the living Bible. Then the high priest asked him, are these accusations true? And this was Stephan's lengthy reply. I mean, it was long. Okay, but I'm only gonna give you the things that God showed me. So here goes Stephen. The glorious God appeared to our ancestors Abraham in Iraq, and this is 2, 2, 3, chapter 7. The glorious God appeared to our ancestors Abraham in Iraq before he moved to Syria and told him to leave his native land, to say goodbye to his relatives and to start out for a country that God will direct him to. Verse 5. God promised Abraham that eventually the whole country will belong to him and his descendants. Verse 8. God also gave Abraham the ceremony of circumcision at that time as evidence of the covenant between God and the people of Abraham. Verse 9 through 10. Now he's talking about Joseph. Joseph was sold by his brothers to be a slave in Egypt. But God was with him and delivered him out of all his anguish and gave him favor before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. God also gave Joseph unusual wisdom so that Pharaoh appointed him governor over all Egypt as well as putting him in charge of all the affairs of the palace. Here goes Moses. Moses was born a child of divine beauty. His parents hid him for three months, and when at last they could no longer keep him hidden and had to abandon, Pharaoh, had to abandon him, Pharaoh's daughter found him and adopted him as her own. Forty years later, in the desert near Mount Sinai, an angel appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush. And the Lord said to him, take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. Come, I will send you to Egypt. And so God sent back the same man his people had previously rejected. Moses himself told the people of Israel, God will raise up a prophet much like me from among you brothers. But our fathers rejected Moses and wanted to return to Egypt. 
So here goes Stephen. 45 through 60. Years later, when Joshua led the battles against the Gentile nations, this tabernacle was taken with them into their new territory and used until the time of King David. God blessed David greatly, and David asked for the privilege of building a permanent tabernacle for the God of Jacob, but it was Solomon who actually built it. However, God doesn't live in temples made by human hands. The heaven is my throne, says the Lord, through his prophets, and earth is my footstool. What kind of a home could you build, asked the Lord. Will I stay in it? Did I make both heaven and earth, you stiff, naked heathen? Must you forever resist the Holy Spirit? But your fathers did, and so do you. Name one prophet your ancestors didn't persecute. They even killed the ones who predicted the coming of the righteous one. The Messiah, whom you betrayed and murdered. Yes, and you deliberately destroyed God's laws. You received them from the hands of angels. The Jewish leaders were stung with fury by Stephen's accusations, and they grind their teeth in rage. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed steadily upward into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at God's right hand. And he told them, look, I see the heavens open. And Jesus, the Messiah, standing beside God at his right hand. Then they mocked him, putting their hands over their ears. Have you ever done that when you're like, la, 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 I don't want to hear la, la, la. I did that as a child. They put their hands over their ears and drowning out his voice with their shouts and dragged him out of the city, stoned him. The official witnesses, the executioners, took off their coats and laid them at the feet of a young man named Paul. And as the murderous stones came hurling at him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he fell to his knees shouting, shouting. He wanted to make sure they were listening. Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. So what can we learn from the story of Stephen that we need to know the story better? Stephen offers a great example of sharing the story of Jesus. In the background of the larger story of scripture. So why did Stephen say all that? Why did Stephen talk about Moses and Joseph and Abraham? And all, I mean, why did, why did Stephen have to go all the way back? Because the Jewish leaders had accused him of speaking against both the temple and the law. He did this to display his knowledge in his spiritual life in the scripture and God. We need to be ready with our story. When we get asked, why do you believe the way you do? Tell me about this Jesus. Tell me what he did. Who is Moses? Who is Abraham? 
We need to prepare ourselves in God's word because you just never know who might ask you. And Stephen was prepared. That's why he had to mention everything because they were accusing him that he had cursed Moses and even God. And he was like, no, mm -mm. let me tell you what's up. Second, sometimes our words will fall on deaf ears. They will. Just like with Stephen, they didn't want to hear it. Why? Because we don't want to hear the truth. The truth is sometimes people don't want to hear it. But we must be prepared to preach to deaf ears also. You know, it rem uh, it, I see a picture of when, when we, we go with Letty um, to the Oval, and, and she's there on fire. I mean, she's sweating. She's like, you know, God's word. I mean, she's on fire, let me tell you. But then you see a group of people playing checkers, doing their own thing. You know, but then you see a group of people that are surrounding what we're doing and they're like what's going on but then you have that group of people over there that's like whatever my, my own business be ready to preach to deaf ears number three sometimes evangelism leads to death the death of Stephen might scare you. Even if the story of Ananias and Sapphira's death by, by God doesn't scare you, God's absence apparent, God's apparent absence from saving Stephen's life, it might scare you. Now, death can be terrible. But far worse than death can also happen to us. Damnation, for example, is worse. We go to heaven, we don't go to hell. The bottom line is this. We are all going to die. Pastor says there's two things that will happen Taxes and death. No doubt about it. But only God knows that. So the bottom line is that, that we're all going to die, but not all of us will truly live. Not all of us will truly live. Stephen truly lived because he lived to the glory of God. He lived to the glory of God. Living in reality is better than living in a false reality. We have to keep it real. Real with ourselves, real with who we are real with people around us. We just have to keep it real. John 16, the Living Bible, I have told you all this so that you will have peace of heart and mind here on earth. And you will have many trials and sorrows. Here on earth, we will have many trials and sorrows. You may say, well, some people that maybe, well, why would I want to follow Jesus? Why would I want to follow Jesus if I'm going to have many trials and sorrows? Because the peace that he gives us is so much better. Amen. And the comfort that he gives us is so much better. 
our lives, our lives have been completely changed. My life has been completely changed. So here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but cheer up, for I have overcome the world. He's overcome it. And we're not alone. And just like, like Stefan, he did it for God. He was the first Christian to be killed. The first martyr. And Acts, if you, uh, uh, you know, Acts is when Christianity took place, took form. You want to know where it started? Read the book of Acts. Because that's where it started. That's where the journey started. That's when the Holy Spirit was doing all these amazing things. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Father, give us boldness. Not fear, not doubt, not insecurities. Father, your word has been so true and real to our lives. You have spoken to us about how things were going to happen in this world, how people were going to be against us and, and, and people betray us if we don't belong to their world. Father God, I thank you for your word. I, I thank you for what took place today, Father God, in the time of prayer, time of interceding. Thank you for the worship. Lord, I also thank you that yesterday is gone. It's a brand new day today. Father, and if there's something that we missed to do or say yesterday, we get a second chance today. So, Lord, I thank you for that. Father, we give you all the glory and all the praise. And we thank you for how you continue to work in each and every one of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good word, Pastor. Great, great words. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, you know, it's a, you know, we uh, we celebrated a lot today. Uh, celebrate life. Uh, we worshipped. We clapped. We sang. Challenged. Thank you for challenging us, Pastor. Uh, and so. We celebrate pastor's birthday today, but I believe today could be some spiritual birthdays here. I believe that, uh, I believe people are going to give their hearts to Jesus today. And your birthday, spiritual birthday, will correspond with pastor's real birthday for the rest of your life. I still remember the day I gave my life to Jesus 41 years ago. March 15th, 1981. That's 42 years ago. Yeah, it's amazing. He's good at that. No, he's good. He's good. He's good at that. And so I'm going to ask everybody to bow your heads. And uh, I'm going to make two calls. And the first call uh, is to anyone here uh, who you walked with God at one time in your life. You know the goodness of God. You've tasted it. You've lived in it. But uh, you came in today and You know where to come. You know when you're at that place where you feel lost or confused or lonely or desperate. You know that place. 
Now, I'm not talking to people that are, you know, you struggling Christian. I'm talking to a person who has been away from Jesus for a And we call it being backslidden. When you've turned and turned, you just stop. You stop coming to Jesus. But today, you're back. And today, if you want to recommit your life to Jesus Christ, while the heads are bowed and the eyes are closed, and the Christians are praying. I just want you to look up, make eye contact with me, and put your head back down. I see you. 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 I'm just going to wait a minute. Oh, Holy Spirit is moving right now. He's touching hearts. It's so beautiful. Only he does that. We can't do that. He does it. And good for you for responding to that. That means he's still alive in you for you to respond. That means he poked his head back up again. And in another group, in my second call, is that you've never known Jesus heard about him you know about God but you don't know God there's only one way to know God and that is in the person of Jesus Christ his only begotten son who was made and came made in the very image of God and you want today you want to get saved you want to give your life to Jesus Christ for the first time in your life while the eyes are closed again Christian pray I want you to just look up make eye contact with me and put your head back down I'm looking around real quick I want to give everyone an opportunity to do that Lord, I want to say thank you for the several people, Lord, who have come back to you today. I'm reminded, Lord, of that place in the scripture where the prodigal had wandered away from home and squandered his inheritance. And as the story goes, it says you waited out there the father waited and waited and waited for his child to come back. I want everybody to look up right now. The father in that story is a picture of God. It's the only place in the Bible where you will find God running. The only place. And you know where he's running? He's running towards his loved child, lost child.
and I'm happy for you. This is a special day. Write the date down, January 22nd, 2023. You responded. He's embracing you right now. Isn't that beautiful? So we're going to stand, everybody. We're going to pray a prayer. We all, as a congregation, going to recommit our lives to Jesus Christ, which we do very often here at Life Church. This is Life Church where people come back to life. This is where things come back to life in Life Church. You'll come back to life today. Shut up. It's your birthday. Let's pray this prayer, all of us together in one voice. I'm going to pray it, then I'm going to say amen, and we're going to be dismissed. If you need a Bible, see Pastor, myself, or any of the leaders you saw up here, we'll give you a Bible. It's a starter Bible to get it started. You can go to work like Pastor said. And Stephen said what he was able to say because he was full of the word. The truth is what sets us free. The word is what sets us free. All right, let's pray. Pray, Let's pray together. Say, Father, I come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Forgive me of my sins. Today, I choose to stop running away from you. I choose to move towards you today. Come into my heart. Come into my thought life. Come into my world. I give you my all. Holy Spirit, give me the power to live for my Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap off for what he's done. Now look, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, and I believe you did, I sense God's power and his love here. You are saved. Not everybody said, no, he said, I am saved. Turn to the person next to you, you are saved. Turn to the person behind you and say, we are saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, church. Have a great, 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 great day. In Jesus' name.